What's up, Maniacs? My name is Mex. I'm a wrestling fan, a wrestling enthusiast, a WrestleManiac, if you will. And today we are back, third part of the four part series, looking at the biggest black wrestlers over the years. October in the UK is Black History Month. And even on this channel, we always talk black history and black wrestling, especially through our show, Wrestle Extra, every Tuesday. But this is Black History Month, so we're going to go a bit deeper into it, jump into the archives and talk about our black stars of yesteryear. And of course, I am joined with our AKA Knowledge. Oh, you're making your impact right here on the channel with all of these stories you've got. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. How, how, how are you? What's going on? I'm good. I'm good. We're waiting Decent. to jump into the 90s. Obviously, now we're kind of getting into more towards present day stuff that the people will either know of or people they'll remember. And um, de <laughs> definitely looking forward to today's show. But we are here today to talk about black wrestling, specifically the biggest black star of the 90s. Um, okay. Before we get into it, guys, you know what to do. There's previous videos on this channel on the playlist. Rocky Johnson of the 70s, Junkyard Dog of the 80s. We're going to get into the 90s in just a second. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And without further ado, oh, let's get into it. Who is the biggest black star of the 90s? Okay, that is a tough question. Mm. Because throughout the 1990s, there wasn't really a black wrestler that was put in a position to actually be a star. There was a few, but... I had trouble picking one. So what I thought was, I thought I'd go for the most groundbreaking wrestler from that period. Mm -hmm. So I picked New Jack. Now. Right. Okay. Now, <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, all right? Ron Simmons was Bill Watts. We're back to Bill Watts again this week. Bill Watts <laughs> wanted a black world champion when he was in charge of WCW. So they got Ron, he got Ron Simmons and he put the belt on Ron Simmons. It didn't work out. Ron Simmons was, he was fired like a year later. Mm -hmm. So... You know, we can't pick him. Booker T was a tag wrestler throughout that whole period. He was a good tag wrestler. They were featured towards the end of the 90s, but he was never put in a position to draw or be a big star. And then you had Mabel in the WWF who kept hurting the other wrestlers. So they, they didn't want to wrestle him. So, you know, I'm, who else was... I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's is, probably is, it. So when you, when you say Mabel, just jog my memory. Is that Viscera Top 5 Dead or Alive Big Men? Is that, is that the that same is, guy? That is... That's Top 5 Dead or Alive Big oh, Vis, Nelson Fraser. Just just to check because, you know, there's someone that's... Same guy. He's the Top 5. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's, let's get back <laughs> to what we were saying. Yeah, so um, I thought I would go for New Jack. And the reason why I want to speak about New Jack because I think... That, I mean, he passed away a few months ago in May. I think it was May 15th yeah. he passed away. But I, I'm going to bring him up and I want to talk about New Jack because I feel like, especially over the last year or so after that Dark Side of the Ring episode popped up, I think people only know the controversies involving New Jack. And don't get me wrong, that is a big part of, of New Jack. I mean, you cannot talk about New Jack without bringing this stuff up. And I'll discuss some of those issues. But I want to say that he was a super important part of ECW. And I think he really gets forgotten about in terms of just how intricate, how much of a big part of ECW actually was to a point where he was a part of the show and he was a part of that culture. And that's pretty much what I want to talk about today, really. Um, and, you know, we like I said, we can talk about his issues too, but, you know, he's he wasn't a big star, but during the boom period, he was one of the top guys in the number three promotion. So, and you know what? He was just, he was super over. And you could argue that he was over, just as over in his promotion as, you know, a bigger star was in WWF or WCW. But yeah, New Jack, that's what we're going to talk about today. Cool. So um, obviously, again, let us know his kind of beginnings, um, you know, getting to ECW, kind of getting all that fandom um, some of the crazy stories that came with it. Let us know that as well. Any challenges, okay, this, runs and feuds. And obviously, I'm sure you're familiar with New Jack as well. So please, whatever you got to say, yeah. please chip in this time. Yeah. Like New Jack is a complicated character to even discuss. And I'm going to say this now, as far as his upbringing, I don't know the truth about New Jack's upbringing. The reason I say it is because I've heard him tell so much different versions of his life i don't know what's true and what isn't 
yeah. that the, the thing he discussed on Dark Side of the Ring, where he spoke about his dad shooting his mum and stuff like that, I'm not saying that's not true, but I'd never heard him say that before. I've heard lots of other stories about his childhood, but nothing, I'd never heard that. But he was from Georgia, and he was a, he was a football player, actually, randomly. He's a football player, and he was actually a high school wrestler as well. You couldn't, you can tell, but he was actually a high school. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> he was a high school wrestler, and um, you know, he he he, he said um, that he was he was an armed robber and he, he robbed banks, but I don't. There's no record of that happening, like, as in like he said he was caught, but I, I, there's no record of that happening. So you know, it could he could I don't know. Um, he also. When he was younger, he said he was a bounty hunter, and he said he's got how much people did he say? He... Do you know the number? He said he I killed. Think... Yeah, I've heard him saying he's killed people, but yeah, I don't know. He, he's... It was a few people because he's got the tattoo of all the, the people that he's killed, like bullet wise. But there's no record of him killing anybody, um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that isn't true. But he he became a pro wrestler in '91. The first time I ever saw New Jack's name. Because I used to buy those those wrestler magazines like Pro Wrestling Illustrated and stuff. Okay. And I remember he worked for the USWA, and I remember seeing the name. He was he was a tag team champion in USWA. It was New Jack and Homeboy. That was his yeah. partner. Yeah. yeah. Homeboy was a white guy whose name I don't remember, but um, his real name. But I don't remember his real name. But that was his partner. But it's important to put out put this out as well. New Jack, um, the 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 character that we saw. I think New Jack was the first urban pro wrestler of the modern era. And when I say that, if you look back in history and you look at all the black wrestlers that were portrayed as rap guys or whatever, like you're looking at PN News and WCW and Men in a Mission with Mabel okay. again and Mo and Oscar. And that man were that man they were, that man they dressed like MC Hammer. Yeah. Like they had beer colours and wacky hair and PN News is on like yo baby, yo baby, yo, all that yeah. crap. And like New Jack was the first guy. He was like from, he was like from like the NWA kind of rap culture, where it was just like we ain't doing that. I'm wearing a, a two part t shirt or an Ice Cube t shirt or an Easy t shirt, whatever. And I'm gonna go out there and we're just gonna fight, or whatever. And I think that like he is a massive part. I don't even think people realize it today in terms of when you go on television and you watch Hit Row or other black wrestlers. I'm not saying that wouldn't exist now, but New Jack was the first one to actually give those characters a level of seriousness that we didn't have before. Probably um, popularized it, basically. Yeah, he he took it to the next level. Otherwise, you know, we still have PM News and that caliber of hip hop wrestler on television. On Cena. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you you get that bubblegum stuff, and New Jack wasn't bubblegum, but um, yeah, he was in USWA. With Jim Cornette, and you know, they focused on that on Dark Side of the Ring. The truth is, is that he came in. Cornette wanted the race baiting tag team so that white people could show up at shows. The problem is, is that they went too far, and the people didn't show up. And he was a big. That was a big misfire on Cornette. He really thought his racists were more. His audience were more racist than they really were, and uh, they just didn't show up. But he wasn't at US. He wasn't in Smoky Mountain for a long time. He went to ECW after that, and that's when he became the New Jack that we know and love today. Paul Heyman had a really, you know, Paul Heyman saw something in New Jack, and for whatever reason, let him get away with mur nearly murder. Like he really let him get away with a lot of stuff. Paul Heyman was in terms of letting people be who they wanted to be and have that freedom kind of like tony khan he was really good at letting guys just be who they were now new jack and mustafa saeed came in and you know they held new jack held the ecw tag belt twice he did it once with uh, mustafa in 96 and then he won the belts the following year with john cronus because mustafa left and uh, him and cronus were the gangster mates because uh, uh, Cronus was an eliminator. They put the two names together. And, um, yeah, but New Jack was, he had so much charisma and he could cut a promo. When I say the guy can cut a promo, it's, some, it's one of the things I think is forgotten. He was such a good promo in that period. We had a lot of good promos in ECW. We had a lot. And he was definitely up there. Yeah, he really was. I mean, you talk about a guy that could just, 
I mean, have you ever seen the promo where he talks about his 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 nephew getting shot and he was gonna win the tag belts and his nephews remember did you ever see that one? No, well, you know, it was great. It didn't happen, but it was fantastic and you believe that it happened and like you know, it was just it's got to be somewhere. It'd be on the network anyway, because the old yeah, yeah, ECW TV shows would be there. Yeah. But um, yeah, they had. But once again, New Jack was never a good wrestler. Like he had. Um, you can find old footage of New Jack on local television where he teams with like Buff Bagwell when they wrestle like squash matches or whatever. They were a team as well. Yeah. But like when they were in ECW, there was no need for that. They literally just brawled, and they played the music, and that song. Um, natural born killers just played throughout the whole match it wasn't f five minutes it would play for 15 minutes it's on repeat throughout the whole match I've never seen anyone do that before in pro wrestling and the matches were chaos absolute chaos and you know they were super violent and at that time you had the sandman in his entrance you had sabu breaking tables and you had the gangsters playing the having that crazy brawl and that song playing throughout the whole match and he was such a big part of the presentation of ECW, people went to ECW and they expected New Jack to be a part of the show. And it got to a point where Paul Heyman could not get rid of New Jack because he was such a big part of the ECW culture. Now, here's a thing New Jack was, there was always something, uh, there was always something that he was involved in. I remember one time he got arrested because the police stopped him and he had somebody in the trunk of his car and this and he he had he had the guy in the trunk of his car and he missed all these shows and then he came back um he came back and he cut this promo at east w arena about what happened it's a great promo it was really okay, good yeah, yeah. but you know even that i remember paul Heyman used to tell people it's like if he does one more thing he's out of here mm. and then you know he tried to beat up brian pillman at um at hostile city uh, hostile sh uh, city showdown in 96 yeah. he tried to beat up pillman when pillman was in his wheelchair and Heyman didn't get rid of him then and and he nearly got them kicked off a pay-per-view because what had happened <laughs> the mass transit thing which i'm not gonna go it's it's featured all over the place but yeah. you, you know he cut a young wrestler called eric coolis he was 17 years old new jack cut him and he cut him badly the, the issue was is that they were going to have a pay-per-view in april and after that incident because it got so much media attention they were scrapped from pay-per-view uh new jack nearly killed ecw in the process and you'd think that paul after doing that would fire him didn't fire him this kept him and he was still a featured part of the show and people loved him it's like what i said last week about the dog people felt they knew him i honestly believe that those ecw fans they felt like new jack was one of them and they they really really liked him they they really loved him he, he embodied what ecw was and maybe even surpassed it because of just the pure <laughs> craziness of some of the the things that, that he pulled out and done but yeah. um why wouldn't you want someone that literally underlines the entire brand like yeah. street yeah, he, he, yeah, that's exactly what it is. He was a, uh, he was violent. He was, and I tell you something. I'll use Nick Gage as an example because Nick Gage is really popular, and you know, he's a legend in his own right. You know, in his underground legend sort of thing. When I watch Nick Gage wrestle, I can tell he's working. When New Jack used to wrestle, you just wouldn't, you just didn't know what was going to happen, don't know. and you just didn't know, and. I remember getting those because back in the day we couldn't watch stuff online. We had to I had to get the tapes. So the pay per view would come and I'd get the tapes sent to my house. And I remember I'd watch the tape and I'd be like, "What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do?" And there was always that that he had that aura about him. He had that aura of danger that isn't really in wrestling anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. this that whole anything could happen um, thing about him. Now, like I said, he was a two time ECW champion. Whatever. But he was such a big part of ECW, whether it be from just even when even on the pay-per-views, a lot of the time they'd never advertise him on the pay-per-view for obvious reason. They couldn't advertise him. But then he'd show up and he'd have his garbage can out and he wouldn't go too crazy on pay-per-view. But, you know, he'd do something. And um, 
you know, he'd light that building up. What hurt New Jack, or well, a lot of things hurt him, was the balcony dives. Because okay, yeah. it really finished him off. Like, he started doing those in 97. He did it as a one-off, but he had directions. So he started doing it on special occasions. But then fans wanted, they expected him to do it every single night. And, you know, those balcony dives, they were really high and he'd done them every single night and they really took years off his career. And uh, I actually, I remember a few months ago, I was, I was on YouTube and I saw one of these balcony dives and I actually watched it and I was just like, they were so brutal. They were so high and so brutal. And the fact that he did those every single, that every single night he wrestled, probably four times a week, is just incredible to me that he would even bother doing that. Even years later, when he ECW was close, he was still doing them because that's what people wanted, you know. But he was a he's a true pioneer. I mean, like I said, he was never a great wrestler, but you can any wrestler can go back and look at New Jack and his work, and you can learn a lot from his promos, from his ring presence, the way he looks at the audience, like the way when he gets a weapon out and he looks at the audience and he he shows everyone. It's such, it's such like Memphis wrestling, you know. He makes sure yeah, everyone sees a toaster or a staple gun. <laughs> And then, you know, he does it so deliberately, it's perfect. It really, that's what pro wrestling is, you know, in all the blood and, you know, all that stuff. But that's really what pro wrestling is. And, um, yeah, he, I mean, he it's does the a crazed, lot. It's the crazed look on it. I can see it now, that crazed look on his face when he's yeah. about to do something mad. And you know what? They really loved him. The, his, his peers, they loved the guy. Like, the other wrestlers, like, don't get me wrong. I've heard a lot of people were, were terrified of New Jack. Yeah. But the ECW mainstays, the Sandman's, Dreamers, Sabu, they adored the guy. They really did. And like, um, you know, they get into fights. You know, you'd always hear stories about New Jack punching someone backstage or him getting taken. Like, you know, him and Sandman had a fight and him and Sabu had a fight and him and Taz, like Taz was going to kill him one night and New Jack obviously wasn't backing down. You know, was, you hear stuff like that. And it's just New Jack at the end of the day. But, you know, he... You know, he was unprofessional at times for his career. You know, there's the ones that were featured on the dark side, and then there's the ones that weren't featured, but there's a lot of them. You know, him really taking liberties of his opponents. And the, the thing with New Jack, what I've gathered over the years is that if you upset him in any way, and when I say upset him, it doesn't, you don't have to be outright disrespectful. It's the notion that you may be disrespectful is enough to, 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 to set him off incorrectly, yeah. you know, and, that's really not fair, but that's just the way the guy was was tied up, you know. The one of the Dudley boys, um, there was a, a Native American Dudley. His name was Dances with D. W. Dudley, okay. and uh, there was a lot of Dudleys. There's the three famous ones, but there was like ten of them. There were so many of them, and uh, New Jack hit him with a nightstick, like full on with a nightstick, just cracked the back of this guy's head, just because you know D. W. He felt looked at him funny. So he just cracked him in the back of his head. You know, he beat up Chad Austin in the ECW arena, just beat the crap out of him because uh, Chad Austin promised that um, he was going to, I don't remember what he said he was going to get him. He was going to get him something. And Chad Austin kept uh, kept making up excuses for him not coming up to the building with his stuff. So New Jack just beat him up in front of 1,500 people. It's just stuff like that that he would do. And like I said, Paul would never get rid of the guy. Like Paul, He left ECW in 2000. He quit because Paul wasn't paying anybody. And he owed New Jack. I mean, it was like forty grand. He owed New Jack, wow. and because um, Paul at the end, Paul owed. Yeah, yeah, everyone. Yeah, he owed Dream at like two hundred grand. He owed all these. He owed Van Dam one hundred and fifty thousand. You know, he owed all these guys money, and New Jack was just like, "I'm out of here." So he left. But um, yeah, New Jack, the scaffold thing you might be talking about is the one with Vic Grimes. Yeah, where yeah. he threw Grimes off the scaffold. That was an XPW, but what? Oh, okay. That was an XPW. That was in 2004. And what started that off was that um, they were in ECW in 2000 on pay-per-view. And they had this match. And there was a scaffold. And they had said before that they were going to brawl up to the top of the scaffold. And then they were going to fly off the scaffold for a table. There's a table there. Anyway, they got up to the scaffold. That was the plan. Grime... Yeah, that was the plan. Anyway, they're up there. And Grimes is like, no, I ain't doing it. And New Jack's like, we're going off this. If you watch it, it's that uh, living dangerously. Two thousand. You can see them stand up there holding each other for time. Yeah. yeah. And um, Grimes is like, I ain't doing, it, I ain't doing. It. Anyway, so New Jack just grabbed him and this jumped off. And uh, Grimes he flipped 
and he, he landed on New Jack's head and he broke New Jack's leg and New Jack lost sight in his left eye. And uh, New Jack, he threw him off the scaffold years later saying he wanted to kill him. He, he was his intentions to kill him. I don't know if that was true because Vic Grimes has always said that it was a work. And I've heard New Jack actually say that it was a work too, but but he for years and years and years has said that he meant to kill Vic Grimes. Then he stabbed the guy all those times in, in Florida. You know, there's all this stuff, but all, all this stuff takes away from the fact that he was a true pioneer of hardcore wrestling and just wrestling in general, because you know it's something out of all those ECW guys. Uh, the top guys in ECW, Sabu, Van Damme, Taz, Dreamer. New Jack was the only one that didn't get a shot in one or two big companies. Yeah. But I, and, I, at the same time, you need to, you, you can kind of understand why. Oh, yeah. I can understand why. And the truth is, I probably wouldn't either. But yeah, I think if Paul Heyman had maybe managed him a bit better and maybe put his foot down a bit more, Maybe New Jack would have got those opportunities later on when ECW shut down. Maybe, I mean, he doesn't have to be world champion, but God, you know, the guy is such a good act to have on your show. Yeah. So, um, so I, I actually think about that. I was actually thinking about that now, and I was like, he could have actually, if if Paul would have managed him better, maybe New Jack would have had more in the wrestling business. Yeah. And it's a shame because he never made the big money. He did good money in ECW, but he never made that big money that would have come if he would have went elsewhere. But New Jack is definitely one that. He should be remembered. Controversy is cool, but there's a lot that can be taken away from watching New Jack. And like I said, the guy was a super, super interview. Like, amazing interview. Amazing. I mean, like you said right at the top of this, maybe not the biggest star of the 90s. It sounds like your 90s was very much like a, just a rebuilding time for um, the black wrestling community, if you like. Obviously, we knew The Rock late in later 90s. He kind of started, you know, really getting his push. See, I didn't want to talk about Rock. I thought that was too easy. No, th yeah, no, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But yeah, like you said, um, like we we're just saying, he wasn't there yet. He wasn't at, you know, the pinnacle, so to speak. And then, you know, Booker T, another great star, um, him and his brother, but in the tag team, so not necessarily right at the top at the time. Um, but the fact he's chosen someone that is a pioneer, a trailblazer in hardcore wrestling, um, within you know black wrestling community um, that is definitely a special kind of a selection sort of thing um, and you know New Jack we recently obviously like you said he recently passed away we've seen the dark side of the ring but yes. a very fascinating character um, someone that I probably need to, I need to look into more about because um, yeah it seems like it's just a story to play to this guy there, there's a lot of stories and I tell you what um, back in the day, right, we used to have these shoot tapes. They were called RF video shoot interviews. And nowadays, you go on YouTube and you see these, they call shoot interviews, whatever. Back in the day, RF video used to sell these shoot tapes, and they were eight hours, right? And wrestlers would just sit there and they'd answer questions. And I tell you what, New Jack's shoot interviews were the best. They were so entertaining. Like, he'd just sit there and he'd answer questions, and a lot of it was bullshit, mm. you know. But, you know, he was just so entertaining and he was so funny. And, um, like, they've got to be online somewhere. But if anyone ever gets a chance to go back and watch the 96 or 98 shooting interviews of New Jack, they are really worth watching. They are so funny. They're hilarious. The guy had such a good sense of humor. And I can see why he was such a beloved member of the ECW locker room. And, you know, while I'm at it, actually, you know, the substance abuse issues that he had um he self-medicated a lot after you know that that, yeah. that physical style i'm sure paid a paid its toll in terms of his uh his passing away as well but yeah. um is in a way it's a cautionary tale as well the, the new jack story yeah. in terms of maybe stop abuse, maybe don't abuse your body so much um but you know, that's another yeah. story definitely, for another time definitely really. some learnings that can be taken but that is it guys that is um Maybe not necessarily the biggest star of the 90s, but definitely the pioneer of, you know, hardcore wrestling um, at that time in, within the black community. Like I say, New Jack. 
L, thanks again for dropping that knowledge on us, letting us know about New Jack and everything he got up to, I guess, in his prime days um, wrestling. Um, obviously, he's no longer with us, so rest in peace. Um, rest in peace. New Jack. But um, yeah, guys, hope you're really enjoying this series. We have one more part of this series, and that is the biggest star of the 2000s. So we're going to bring that to you guys next week. As I have been doing, trying to bring you guys a piece of merch from the black wrestling community whether it's a podcaster or a pro wrestler and today i'm wearing my brother's t-shirts wrestling's podcast this is where me and Earl met on this podcast on this fantastic yeah. podcast so um definitely guys get involved in wrestling i gotta get one yeah no, i gotta 100%. get one all the details will be down below in the description so um yeah you know where to find the rest things guys and their merch um any last bits we want to throw in quickly Earl, before we get out of here uh oh man you know what i'll tell you what one new jack match if you want to check one out living dangerously 98 it was him and spike dudley against bubba ray and devon against axel rotten and balls mahoney three-way Watch the balcony dive. That's all I'll say. Did you say? Living dangerously, 1998. It was from Asbury. I think it was in New Jersey. It wasn't Asbury Park, but it was in New Jersey. And all I'll say is, watch the balcony dive that him and Spike Dudley do. Insane. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> okay, I've written that down. I'm gonna go check that out. Um, cool. Thank you very much again, oh, guys. No problem, dude. If you're enjoying these these videos on this series, hit us with a thumbs up. Go back and check. Rocky Johnson and Junkyard Dog, which we previously done. And if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we drop a new video. WrestleManiac UK signing out, and I'll see you.